did you get into battle rap? Um, the, I always been into hip hop. My, my older cousin, he's passed away, showed me how to rap when it was karaoke machines and tape decks. Man, we used to had a karaoke machine, put the put the instrument away. That was when they made singles. They don't even do that no more. You can go buy a single from a from a record store. It would have the song, the instrumental, a snippet, the acapella, all on the same cassette deck. You would throw the instrumental on, and we would plug up the mic, and we would just rap over it. And, and that's how I got into hip hop and rapping. Then once a, the battle shit came on, college, whatever, Southern University, shout out to Southern. They had a black college tour with BET. BET came to Southern and did the, the black college tour battle Pepsi freestyle challenge, fr battle rap challenge, whatever. It was like the same thing as Freestyle Friday, but on the road. And they came to Southern. I joined the competition just to see what it was about. That's when you battle into a beat, though. So, um, And I came in third place, surprisingly. And I was like, Whoa, to me, I never had battle third place out of like 16 cats. I'm like, okay. So the next year, they came first place. Next year again, first place. Third year. Well, fourth year, third, first place. All first place. It was in the uh, the Advocate. That's the newspaper in Baton Rouge. And um, they talked about me just being a back-to-back -back champ, which when I first came home, I used to call myself and pose the back-to-back champ. And pose the champ, woo -woo. And if you go to the first battle, my first street battle with Cash, it actually mentioned that. But I got away from that because I realized it wasn't the same. And that's why I felt like I was so horrible because I was used to the beat carrying you, the beat saving you. You know what I'm saying? You could be an average MC, but with a dope beat, it could really help you flourish. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking I'm going to go on this stage and, and be rapidly, rapidly. And the crowd wasn't rocking with that. Like, they, you got to control the crowd, set your tone. And he was able to do that. He had that it factor, you know. And I had to learn, like, I had to take a step back. Like, what was I doing wrong? Then after that, I, I, I started studying different ballads and why they were successful and why were, why some weren't. And I, I got the got the recipe together and started putting together wins. Who were some of them ballads founders you said? X Factor. Uh -huh. X Factor. Mm -hmm. As far as Detroit, okay. X Factor, and more specifically, X Factor versus Rich Dollars. That's that's one of the Same ones that yeah that yes yes but he had that mixture of being clever he wasn't rapping too fast but the bars was heavy and still being funny without cracking jokes he didn't have to crack a joke for it to be funny so if you go back and watch me and Marv it's like three or four good jokes but then it's another three or four good bars that made you laugh because it was true it wasn't because it was funny <laughs> so just trying to learn how to have more to give than just what's on the surface. So switching gears, we're gonna, I, I, I like to change it up a little bit. And you know, we're gonna throw all the humble stuff out the window. Man. Exactly, right? As I said, we t today, as of today, the humble shit is out the window, we done. Hollywood pose, that's uh -huh. what it is. Okay, we'll <laughs> that like it. So, Hollywood pose, all that shit out the window. I've heard your music. Mm. I know you're a producer. So let's talk a little bit about that. How long you been producing? Oh, I don't even know what you qualify as a producer, man. I, you we, make beats, man. <laughs> Come on, man. It's Plug City, man. You produce your own music, don't you? You make your own beats. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, I've been doing you that have since a studio. I was 16, man. Since you were 16? Yup. Somebody put me, my cousin, Leon Knighton, man. He put me on Reason 3. Reason 3.0. I would come after school. I would walk to his house after school from Western up up uh, uh, Buchanan, man, to his crib. He, I go in the basement, mm -hmm. and he'll turn it on. He's like, do what you want, man. If you mess up, just hit undo. I used reasons. Yep, so reasons. that's how I started. And I just, that's the, all I knew. And so as I got older, I finally got my own money. I was like, that's all I knew. So they're like, you don't use Fruity Loops. You don't use this and that. Mm -hmm. I knew reason. So I went and purchased it, and then I started dabbling it, and that's what I'm, you know, so I say, I say 16. I've been making music. music. And you have your own studio now. Finally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you put yeah. it together. I was, yeah, I was there at the beginning stage. Nothing but tile floors and a mic. Now I got a nice yeah, little cozy. Lyrics is a little loud. Yeah, yeah. We just shot, we shot a video there. We yeah. shot a video there. So, are you, are your beats available for purchase, or are you just doing them for yourself? Yeah, the ones I make, uh, they're for me. I mean, a lot of people don't. I'm gonna say they don't, but 
the people that I, I mix and mingle with, they don't really fare with my type of beats. So that's cool. It's always been that way when it comes to my music, though, because I'm not a trap, ba- uh, a trap battle, a trap rapper. So my stuff is more uh, light to the ear, like a stand up from Ludacris or something like that. It's just, it's, it's, it's going to get you 90 beats per minute or somewhere at 85, 95. It's going to be up tempo. It's going to be something that's going to make you move. But my opinion, there are, there is a demographic for what you do. I've heard your music. <laughs> so, there's a demographic for it. If I were you, I, I, I put it out there. That Just saying, it's Plug City. We're going we gonna to keep it real. Hey. I put your music, I, if I were you and I had the skills that you had, I would put it out there. I'm just saying. They will, they will be out there. Uh, uh, I got the trial runs, man, on SoundCloud. So, in Pose, on in Space POSE, SoundCloud search. It's the very top link. You'll see me with an incredible costume on with some Monopoly money fanned out. You click on that, and there's about nine or ten tracks on there that I leaked out before I put them on Spotify and, and, and with Apple Music and everything. I just want to test run them and see how they're going. So if you want to check it out, well, we go on think there. about this, too. Wait, now what? I'm cutting up y'all. I just got to plug. It's Plug City, so I got to plug. Go ahead. You got to plug. I plug. I shot that picture. <laughs> oh yeah, he shot the picture of the incredible suit. Talk yeah. that shit, Hank. With my house shoes, I had my slippers on. In the rain. We, we did a video. <laughs> I had my slippers on in the rain with me and my wife's umbrella company. Come on, quit playing. What umbrella company? Yeah, www.mayadore.com. You feel me? Check that out. LED umbrellas, man, and they fiberglass. You feel me? Plug yeah. City. Plug <laughs> they don't. City. They don't. They don't flip upside down when the wind get up on them. Just go check the video out. I want one. I'm gonna order one today. Hey, hey. hey I do. Dr- I do drop offs. Two of them. I, I do drop offs. They got a flashlight on the end. Mm-hmm. Very. Yep. So your dedicated hand. You need to look in the trunk. Look at the keyhole because the porch light ain't on. Man. It's a good Christmas. If gift. you know, you know. It's a good Christmas gift. I'm gonna... <laughs> um. As I was saying, what if you advertised your music and someone like your favorite, Buster Rhymes, was mm. to hear it and say, I want that beat? You, what you, you mean? You don't know. That's what I'm saying. You got to put this stuff out here. <laughs> what if Buster picture. Rhymes battle rap. And, and that's sure his favorite artist. artist. All time. I'm sure he watched All Mar. Time. He might have seen you verse Mar. He might. And he just dropped that album the same time. The so yeah. Yeah. Extinction level. I know you too. love that. I know you love yeah, that. Yeah, I love that album. Yeah. I do. I, like <laughs> I love that. I like that. He just dropped this new video. Boom, bro. That was so cold. Okay, bro, <laughs> ask your question. Then we gonna get What's the question? <laughs> What's the question? What you was? I already did. Uh, I, I oh, said yeah, what I said. So you talking about as far as what if? What if he was interested? I mean, yeah. of course, of course. What you mean? Like that's whatever I can do to make that that connection. To make that type of connection, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. That would be. That would be it. That and it was more it. so like a, a statement. What if Buster Rhymes? You, you need to. That's why you need to put it out yeah. there. Because what if somebody like Buster Rhymes, who was your favorite, agree, man. It's just we That's all, what I'm saying. It wasn't artists, really man, a we, question. Question. Some was, of us artists, we'd be scared, man. They might not tell you that, but they do. They're scared. That they're scared of rejection, man. They're scared hey, of putting man. out there and they're not making any traction. And. That's you. You get sec- you second guess yourself sometimes. Like I'm gonna put it out, not- and now to the point where, whatever. Like, I, I, what's the worst that can happen? Put it out. But you well, we know fear can be your strongest setback. Hey, um, let me check my schedule.